Hello everybody and welcome back. If you know me, I'm Claudia. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm coming to you from my bathroom because several of you actually asked me to make a video on microneedling. And when you first asked me about this, I was quite hesitant to make this video. Two reasons. First of all, I am not an expert in microneedling. There are quite a few people here on YouTube who are experts in it. But then I thought about it and I actually have been microneedling for 10 years now. So though I am not an expert, I have a lot of experience in it. And the second reason I was hesitant is that I always talk about loving yourself, accepting yourself, and I am a big believer in that. I'm a big believer in fostering self-love. And sometimes when we talk about these sort of beauty procedures, it feels like it's doing the opposite. However, I also am a big fan of helping my body out, doing something it naturally does, and that it is getting a little bit sluggish in. And to me, microneedling is like working out. When we work out, we create tiny little micro injuries in our muscles. They have to repair themselves and they get stronger. And unfortunately, as we get older, we lose more and more muscle mass. So it's something we have to keep doing. And microneedling is sort of similar to it. We create tiny little micro injuries with these tiny little needles, with these micro needles. And therefore our skin has to respond. It has to produce more collagen, more fibroblasts, and it gets stronger. And same thing, as we get older, we produce less of the collagen and the fibroblast. So we're just helping our skin out to do something it naturally does so that it stays healthy and strong. So those were the two reasons why I was hesitant. But since you wanted this video, here it is. If you are not into home DIYs, then this video might not be for you. Click out, watch another video of mine. Also, if you're not comfortable looking at needles, they're really not visible, but they are micro needles, so there are needles involved. I am not a doctor, remember that. I say this all the time. I am a trained and certified PA. However, that was a long time ago in Germany. I have since replaced my stethoscope with dumbbells. But because I am a trained and certified PA, I am very comfortable with needles. So it doesn't bother me at the least, but if it bothers you, click out and watch something else. And also, when you microneedle, there are different ways to microneedle. You can do cosmetic microneedling, which is very, very shallow. You usually go only about two millimeters, or sorry, 0.2 millimeters or 0.3 millimeters. So there usually is not any blood. However, I am not the biggest fan of cosmetic microneedling. My skin just doesn't really like it that much. It gets really sensitive from it. So what I do, I sometimes cosmetic microneedle most of the time I do it deeper. I go a little bit more on the therapeutic side. And when you go deeper, you get a little bit of pinpoint bleeding. So deeper is anything 0.5 millimeters and deeper. Now, truthfully, I started this 10 years ago. And back then I learned about microneedling from Dr. Fernandez, who is actually sort of the inventor of microneedling. And Dr. Fernandez had the philosophy, I don't know if he still does, but he had the philosophy that to get some skin rejuvenation to make your skin healthier and for it to produce collagen and fibroblasts, the deeper the better. He basically said one time, I read what he said, and it said that if you do not get bruising and swelling and basically a lot of injury, then it's not really worth it. So when I first started, I sort of went with that and I actually have gone as deep as three millimeters, which now actually I think is kind of crazy. I don't go that deep anymore. I go about one millimeter, maybe a little bit deeper on my cheeks, but that's it. However, even with that, there is still a little bit of pinpoint bleeding. So this is a long winded way of saying, if you do not like the look of blood, then again, this video is not for you, just click out. I'm not gonna show the whole goriness. I wanna talk to you about what it does. I wanna show you a little bit of how I do it, but I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'm gonna speed it up so this video isn't forever long. So as I said, microneedling is basically like working out in a way. We're creating tiny little micro injuries to the skin. Our body responds because it wants to heal it. And so it produces more collagen, more fibroblasts, and your skin gets healthier, younger looking, all those things. When I first started microneedling, I actually had very bad skin. And when I say bad skin, I'm not talking about having acne or anything, but I have really abused my skin. I used to worship the sun. I was so dark and my hair was so light from the sun. I never, ever, ever was sunscreen for the longest time. 
when I moved to Los Angeles, I basically just lived at the beach. So lots of sun damage. On top of that, I was anorexic for two decades. So not enough nutrition to actually nourish my skin. So the combination gave me very, very bad skin, very sensitive skin. It reacted to everything and it basically was paper thin. One of my best friends is an esthetician and when she would give me extractions, my skin basically just came off with her touch. So my skin was not in good shape at all. So when I started microneedling, that very quickly changed. My skin now is in such better shape than it was 10 years ago when I first started this. It is so much healthier. It is not reactive anymore. It is much thicker. It's getting thinner with age. That just happens. But it doesn't come off anymore when I pick it or anything like that. It is incredible what microneedling has done to my skin. And I am a big, big believer, just as I'm a big believer in working out and lifting weights. When I first started microneedling 10 years ago, I used a dermal roller. That's all that was available. So I would use a dermal roller several times, always disinfect it in between, and then throw it out and use a new one. Then the derma stamp came out and I actually did not like the derma stamp. I found it impossible to clean and I had to throw it away every time and that seemed really wasteful. And so now we have all kinds of machines. There's the Dr. Pen, I think they have eight or 10 or so of them. I have a European machine, it's called the Dominator. I decided to buy this one first of all because I live in Europe right now. Also when I did research, the people who made this, so you have to take it with a grain of salt, the people who made this said that with the derma pen, you actually get tiny little micro tears. And of course you don't want that. You want tiny little punctures, not tears. They showed this on a piece of paper. Again, you have to take it with a grain of salt, but that's why I ended up getting the Dominator. I am curious about the Dr. Pen. So if you have a Dr. Pen, if you use it, let me know down below how you like it. But this machine comes with individual cartridges and you just use them one time and then you throw them away. So you still throw things away, but this is a lot less wasteful than throwing a whole derma roller away. And unfortunately, I don't have one to show you, but I will insert a little picture right here so you see what a derma roller looks like. The problem with derma rollers also is that a lot of them are not very good quality. Some of them are actually wire instead of needles. So if you decide to get a derma roller, well, let's back up. If you decide you want to do microneedling at home, I would say get a derma roller first to see if you actually stick with it. If it's something you don't mind doing, I don't mind doing it at all, but some people are just a little bit too squirmish or don't like doing it. But that would be my recommendation. Get a derma roller first, but get it from a good source to make sure that it's actually needles. You want them to be stainless steel needles and not barbed wire or something crazy that can actually injure your skin. And then if you know that you're gonna stick with it, then you can buy a machine, Dr. Pen, whatever it is. So this is what I'm going to be using. It has different settings on it and also different speeds and I'll show you all that in a second. Another thing that I want to address is that I have gotten some grief from some people about microneedling at home. They tell me you should leave it up to a professional and if that is your opinion, I completely respect that. I personally, like I said, I am very comfortable with needles and truthfully, I think that everybody can do this. But if you're more comfortable, doing it or having it done by a professional, then by all means do so. As I said, one of my best friends is an esthetician. Her and I have talked at length about microneedling and she actually knows very little about it. So just because somebody is an esthetician, she has been an esthetician for 25 years, doesn't mean that they know how to microneedle. It's something they need to be trained in as well. So why not train yourself? So that's all I have to say. But as I said, if you are more comfortable going to a professional, by all means, please do so. If you just know that you're not comfortable doing it yourself, then go to a professional. And that's it, let's get going. First thing I'm going to do is wash my face. I want it completely clean. And then I'm gonna show you how I use this. I'm going to put my hair up and really make sure that it's out, that it's out of the way. And then because I have quite a bit of sunscreen on here, I'm going to double cleanse and really make sure that my skin is nice and clean. You don't have to go as far as cleaning your skin with alcohol. There's no need for that, but just make sure that your skin is nice and clean. So I'm gonna start with the cleansing oil. And then I'm going in with my second cleanse.
Now, if you wanted to, you could apply numbing cream. I don't do that because actually with the machine, it is a lot less painful than with the roller. However, if you are a little bit squirmish, you might want to apply numbing cream. The only place that's really a little bit sensitive is around the lips, but not badly enough that I actually need the numbing cream. So I'm gonna tone my face and then we'll get started. I'm gonna plug my machine in. Unfortunately, it is not battery operated and it is also really loud. I'm not sure why. So as I said, I'm gonna show you a little bit of how I do it and then I'm gonna fast forward and turn the volume down because this is crazy loud. So here's my little individual cartridge. I'm gonna open that up. Let's have a hard time opening these. This I'm gonna open. Here we go. And so this is what it looks like. So it has tiny little needles in here and then the machine presses them out. Can you see that? So they're in here and then the machine presses them out. And on the machine I will set a setting so it's not going to push all of these out. If it was to push all of these out I believe this is 2.5 millimeters. So that's as deep as it goes but I can also just set it for 0.2 millimeters and I think that all the machines are the same way. The needles are all the same length but then the machine sort of dictates how deeply you do it. I'm gonna put this in here. Now, if you use a derma roller, it's a little bit different. When you use a derma roller, you want to go up and then across. Some people like to go in a star pattern. I never like that because I think that that's just too much injury. So I used to just go up and every time I went up, I would lift my roller and then go up again. So what you don't want to do, or what I think you don't want to do again, remember I'm not an expert at this, it's just my own experience, you don't want to go up and down because you don't want to create a groove, you just want to create little tiny micro pinpoints. So I would go up, lift the roller, set it just a, slit, a smidge over to the other side, go up again, lift it, smidge over. Then the same thing, I would go horizontally. Again, every time lift it, so you don't just want to go back and forth like that. Or again, I don't think you want to because you don't want to create a groove. I have seen people do that and you can see the grooves and I just, as I said, I think it's too much injury. With this one, what you want to do is you just keep going in little circles. And so I sort of do the same pattern. I go down and then I go across, okay? So let's get going. now. Since I do this to myself, I don't have to wear any gloves. My hands are completely clean. I am going to put a little bit of hyaluronic acid on here and I'm gonna open the bottle, wash my hands, and then put it on there uh, so that I don't get anything that was on the bottle. And then I can just use my hands because they're clean. So here's my hyaluronic acid. I'm actually going to put this in a little dish and then apply it with a brush just to be on the safe side, but I'm still gonna wash my hands afterwards. I'm gonna put just a little bit in this dish right here. Oh, and this is one of those bottles that doesn't wanna do this, so I have to use the dropper to do it. The reason I use hyaluronic acid, when I first started doing this, I did not use hyaluronic acid. I did this on just dry skin which with a roller works okay. With the Derminator or even a Dr. Pen, I've heard it doesn't work that well. You wanna have a little bit of a slip, so that's where the hyaluronic acid comes in. This is going to be for my slip. I'm also going to put a little bit of a stem factor on, and the stem factor I'm going to actually needle into my skin. So I'm gonna wash my hands, put the stem factor on, then we'll get going. So I just washed my hands. I have this tiny little bottle of Neogenesis Recovery right here. I really like this stuff. And I am going to, I am not touching my skin with this. I'm just going to drop it down. This hand is still clean. It hasn't touched the dropper. You know what, with this whole pandemic, I have really gotten good at which hand has touched what. So I'm just going to apply this. I'm gonna put on some on my neck too because I want to do my neck as well. Maybe we even do the chest, not sure yet. Okay. So now I have my little dish right here with my hyaluronic acid and I'm going to start on my forehead actually, which is what I usually do. Okay, I'm going to turn my machine on 
And this one asks you a whole bunch of questions first. It says, is this, is this a single needle? No. Is it nine needles? No, it actually has 12 needles, the cartridge. 12 needles, yes. And timer on, I don't want the timer. There we go. This does have a timer in it and I don't want the timer because I, I don't know what the timer actually does. So it has a slow, it has a medium. So this is the slow right here. You can see how loud it is. And it has a medium. It's, I'm gonna actually, so I have it on, sorry, on one millimeter right now, okay? That's what I'm gonna do with that. And then I'm going to do it I'm just going to start here and I do little circles and I want to make sure, like I said, I'm going to cut and then I'm going to cut. And it doesn't really hurt, it's just make you want to sneeze. I'm drying out a little bit, so I'm going to put a little bit more of the hyaluronic acid on there. You can see there's a tiny bit of pinpoint needling. Not too crazy. And then I'm going to go across horizontally. And the forehead is usually the most sensitive. I'm also going to go over my eyebrows. Oh, it is not that comfortable. Oh, here's where the sneeze. Thank you. Alright, so that was it. You can see there's a little bit of bleeding. I'm sorry, this is so loud. The bleeding is more because of the hyaluronic acid. When I used to do it dry, there was not as much bleeding. So now I'm going to do this side, and then this side, for my chin. But I'm going to do it fast forward so you don't get bored. So as I said, the hyaluronic acid is mainly for slip, but of course it is going to get microneedled into my skin. So I want to make sure that I use a clean product without too many additives. And I will link what I use down below in the description box. And though I learned about microneedling from Dr. Fernandez, who I think is absolutely brilliant, and I will also leave some of his information, as well as some studies he did on microneedling in the description box, he is actually not the biggest fan of machines such as the Dominator or the Dr. Pen, because he says there is a risk of overtreating, so he vastly prefers dermal rollers. But I think with both you can overtreat, so just make sure you don't do too many passes. More is not always better. Trust me, I've done that, and you just create too much information, and that's not a good thing. All right, I washed it all off. As you can see, it really doesn't look that bad. It's quite red. It looks a little bit like a sunburn. The body is pushing the blood there, so that's a good thing. But other than that, it doesn't look that bad at all. It doesn't feel bad. It feels a little bit hot right now, but that's about it. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the stem factor on there, and then I'm just going to leave it alone. So you can see it's quite easy to do. Again, completely okay if you want a professional to do it, but I think that if you're comfortable with doing this at home, there are really not too many things that can go wrong or really hardly any things that can go wrong. You just really want to make sure that everything is nice and clean. Always do it on a clean face. Always use fresh cartridges. Also, if you do your face and your neck, then change the cartridge. Never use the cartridge more than once. If you do use a dermal roller, make sure you disinfect it in between and also don't use it too many times because those needles will go numb so then it's not going to really give you the effect you want and you risk injury but other than that really nothing can go wrong or hardly anything can go wrong you want to make sure that you don't put anything crazy on there right now vitamin c is something that is not 
a desirable thing to put on because you can cause granulomas, which are little bumps under the skin. So vitamin C is something to avoid. Truthfully, before I knew that, I have used vitamin C afterwards and I have never had a problem, but now that I know, I avoid it. So I just put my stem factor on afterwards and then you can either put the hyaluronic acid back on if it feels tight or just something sort of um, occlusive so that nothing comes in from the outside. If you do cosmetic needling, you can put on whatever. It'll basically just make it absorb better. But right now I have tiny little, tiny little channels right here that are open to whatever is floating around in the environment. So I want to make sure that it stays clean. They close up fairly quickly, but again, I don't want to put anything crazy on there, nothing too aggressive. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that it wasn't too gory. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Also let me know if you do microneedle and um, I will show you what this looks like tomorrow and then the day after. Usually tomorrow it's just a little bit red, you'll see, but I can apply sunscreen and everything else. I don't want makeup, but I can apply sunscreen. And if you do wear makeup, I would say you probably are okay if it's mineral makeup to apply it the next day. Maybe better to wait a day, I don't know. I I'm not an expert in makeup, but anyways, I will link a few channels down below as well who are talking about microneedling and are maybe more, not maybe, but are a little bit more experts than I am. And as I said, I will show you tomorrow what it looks like and the day after. So see you soon. So this is what it looks like the next day. I'm a little more red than I was when I woke up because I just got out of the shower and I took a pretty warm shower, but there's a little bit of redness, nothing too crazy. You can easily cover that up with tinted sunscreen or makeup doesn't hurt at all. The only thing when I work out, I worked out this morning, it stings a little bit when I sweat, but that's it. The channels are closed by now, the little micro injuries are closed by now. So what I personally do, and some people say not to do that, again, I'm not an expert in this, but it has worked for me over the last 10 years. I will link some other channels down below you can check out. But what I personally do is I continue with my regular skincare the next day. The night off doing it, as you saw yesterday, I don't. I don't put Retin-A or anything on, but the next day I continue with my regular skincare. Some people say not to do that, so do your own research, see what works for you. But as I said, these channels are closed now, so I personally do not worry about it. If your skin is sensitive, you might want to use something that calms it down a little bit, but mine is completely fine. And as far as the redness, that's just because I went a little bit deeper. If you do cosmetic needling, which I said, those are the shorter needles, and that just doesn't work for me that much. But if you, I would say, if you want to start microneedling, try the cosmetic needling first because it is much less deep, so much less risk of anything happening, less painful, and what I was getting to, you also shouldn't be red at all the next day. Some people do it every day. So with cosmetic needling, there shouldn't be much redness right after, yeah, because you have that blood flow coming to the surface. But the next day, you shouldn't have any redness. So I am going to continue with my day and I will check in with you tomorrow and show you what it looks like tomorrow. Good morning, this is day two. As you can see, the redness is almost gone and I actually just got done working out. So I am a little bit flushed still from the workout, but there's hardly anything left. So today it feels completely fine, didn't sting at all when working out. It does feel a little bit dry, it gets a little bit flaky and that's just because the new skin comes from the bottom, old skin flakes off, completely normal. So it feels a little bit tight but nothing that moisturizer can't take care of. So that's it. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this helpful. If you want me to show you how I cosmetic needle, it's basically the same thing, just with shorter needles. And uh, you can, like I said, put your normal skincare on afterwards. I'm happy to make another video. Um, I do this, the deeper needling, about once a month every four weeks or so. Sometimes a little bit longer, but never less than that because your skin does need time to recover and to repair in between. So if you do too much, it's like overtraining. You're sort of defeating the purpose and then you're just creating inflammation and you're not really getting what you want. So I do this once a month, maybe even less. And then if I do cosmetic needle, which I started doing lately because I wanna see what it does, I do it maybe twice a month, every 10 days or so. I tried doing it more, I tried doing it once a week and my skin just didn't like it. So cosmetic needling, if I do it, but every 10 days, some people do it every day, I can't do that. And then the deeper one, once a month. Like I said, your skin does need time to repair. 
and some people don't like to go deeper than 0.5 that's completely fine i don't know if you necessarily have to go deeper i personally like to like i said when i first started this i went really deep and i don't feel the need for that anymore but i go about one millimeter and that seems to be fine for me so do your own research on this if you have any questions or comments of course leave them down below i would love to hear from you let me know if this was helpful and hopefully i'll see you next time bye